<clears throat> shalom. Shalom, shalom. Um, let me get on the light. Okay, I'm just turning on the light, guys. I just realized the sun's gonna set. Shalom. Okay, so again, those of you who are like, watching later on YouTube, oh my gosh, I just did chores. Those of you who are watching later on YouTube, you're going to go 10 minutes in to this video. Well, 11 minutes in to get to the teaching. So we're gonna give it 10 minutes for people to get on. Shalom, shalom, we're giving it 10 minutes for people to get on. Oh goodness, hello guys, shalom, shalom. Um, some of you watched the live earlier. Tonight we're doing Isaiah. Okay, sorry, I had chore hair and it was looking really crazy. So like, I'm just gonna put it down. Shalom, shalom, Graciela, hello, hello. How's everybody doing today? Mm, how's everybody doing? You having a great day? Hello, Estelle. I pray you're having a blessed day, everyone. If you did not, I think some of you caught the live earlier that I did. Um, kind of the neat thing, <laughs> kind of. You know, the neat thing about walking with Yahweh is you have to walk with him. Like daily, he gave the provision. Like daily, they had the manna. Daily, he leads us and guides us, and we have to stay in constant step with him. Um, and so, and so as we're talking about the new year and the Abib barley and is this the year? <laughs> ah, it's a, it's kind of a fun little thing. It's kind of a fun little exercise in how we actually do walk out our faith because often we walk by faith, not by sight. We don't see the step ahead of us. Hi, Donna. Shalom, shalom. Good evening. Oh, hi, Dale. Hi, hon. Um, and so this whole thing with the Passover, if it was, this is the first year, just so you know, that the Abib barley has ever been this confusing. <laughs> I've done this for 23 years now. <laughs> this is the 23rd year and it's never happened like this to, before. A rainy day still in the wrestling match. Oh, I'm praying for you, Graciela. Hi, Heather. I have not probably listened to your message yet. I think I did have, I had, <laughs> I ran in the door at like 12.30, put groceries away, started the Zoom call after I did chores and put the groceries away and then went right from that to the live. My husband got home, did dinner, so then did chores and I just sat down. <laughs> so I'm like, I literally came in the house at 6.53. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Hi, Alex. Um, you got it, Estelle. Hi, Jess. Hi, Nelly. Hi, William. Hello, hello, guys. William, are you driving right now or are you stationary? Um, hi, Ever Ann. Um, and I will get to it, Heather. I will. I am. Um, man, <laughs> the last two days, <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> Hi, Jody. Hello, hello. We're going to wait. Remember, guys, eight more minutes. We start at 7.10, the teaching. So any of you who ever don't like this chit-chat at the beginning, don't forget to set your clock. We started at 7.10. Hi, Anna. You look so cute this afternoon in your little, whatever you were doing, the little kitchen duties. It was so cute, so matronly. It was cute, cute, cute. Hi, Alex. Let's see. Hi, Karina. Hello, hello, everyone. Hi, Christina. Um, hi, Connie. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, <clears throat> you just let me know questions you have. Reach out. I'll keep praying and um, answer as I can. Hi, Heather. Hi, Everly. Is Miss Everly watching or is Everly asleep? Um, Jim talked to the kids, Heather. So Heather's daughter is married to my son. Um, so Jim talked to the kids, and I guess they were at like, Bass Pro Shop or something like that, <laughs> having fun. Anyway, hi, Melissa. Shalom, shalom. Oh, hi, Everly. E -a, e -a, e -e -a. Remember, seven more minutes and we'll start the teaching, guys. So if you feel that this is boring, <laughs> then you can come on back on in seven minutes or set the pause for seven minutes. Um, is anyone else excited about the... It is. <laughs> yeah, you guys, especially your first year, it's like you're finally observing days of the Lord that mean something. Christmas doesn't mean anything. Pagan mist, that's what we call it, pagan mist, thanks to Morgan and Judd. Pagan mist doesn't mean anything. Hi, Jill. Easter doesn't mean anything. It was a fertility goddess. But when you understand Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the whole Feast of Unleavened Bread for me is like so powerful. Um, 
No, well, okay, Heather, they didn't tell me about the goats, but um, I heard about it from Jim, I think. <laughs> um, but the whole Festival of Unleavened Bread for me is one of my favorite times all year because I do this just deep house cleaning, getting all the leaven out, and I really ask the Holy Spirit just to really get in me to the deepest parts and show me if I'm tense, frustrated, because I don't have, like, obvious sins, right? I'm going to, like, obviously, when you, there's, you know, you can do the easy things of Torah. It's the heart issues that are hard. Um, do I have disbelief somewhere, lack of faith somewhere? Do I have anger, bitterness, something like that? And it's just always so nice how the Holy Spirit just extra strongly moves. And this year, I think we're all going to be pressed a little bit more um, as a nation. We're going to be on just really pressed to cry out for the repentance of Israel and his children. Hi, um, where are we? We're in Isaiah 23. So we're going to start at 710. So it's 704 now. Um, hi, Laura. Hello, sister. You look so cute today, Laura, with your hat. I was like, she was so cute. Just like young and springy. <laughs> Isn't it neat, too, with the biblical holidays? Like the Bible New Year starts in spring. Doesn't that make more sense when new life is beginning? Hi, Cassandra. Hi, sweetie. Um, what do you think about attending both Messianic Church or on Saturday? Hi, Estelle. So the Father has told me and everybody else I know not to do that because you're still keeping one foot in Babylon and we're told to come out of Babylon. And the best way we, so we stopped going to Christian church February, um, January of 2002, or was it December of 2001? I think it was, I think it was February actually of 2002. I'm sorry. We were called out of it and we shared with so many people when we stepped out, we were still were sharing. We just couldn't be a part of the system he showed us. Um, I have lots of bread and cookies to make tomorrow. <laughs> hey, it's the, <laughs> the feast of leavened bread before is the feast of unleavened bread. Okay. Four more minutes, guys. and We're going to start the teaching. Hi, Francis. Shalom. Shalom. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Isabel. You have something coming in the mail tomorrow. Hi, Angela. Hi, sweetie. I think spring cleaning was a way to hide the clean from. <laughs> I think spring was a way to hide the clean. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I didn't ever think about that. I think that people just do it in the spring. Um, but when you're getting ready for Passover, it is neat. Or unleavened bread, you do clean your whole house. You'll end up being like, because you clean all the cupboards, you're cleaning everything. So isn't that neat? That could be. That's interesting, Jess. Mixing the beliefs, not good. You're right. I, Audrey, praying for you and Jen. Um, drinking out of a measure. Okay, this is my small cup, Isaiah. This is, I did, the, I even asked the Lord, should I do two or four cups? So normally I do my four, four cup measuring cup because I drink about a gallon of milk a day um, for my rock milk. It's so good. So I've today had two of these and then a quart. So I have had, I've had two quarts today. So I haven't had as much as I normally do, I guess. I'm kind of going light on the milk today, but I just, the other cups aren't big enough. <laughs> and this one just keeps the heat. <laughs> but I was born and raised white trash and I will die white trash. <laughs> so no pinky out here. <laughs> okay, three more minutes we're gonna start the three more minutes we're gonna start the teaching. Oh, you know what, Laura? It looks so cute. I thought you looked adorable. Hi, Lorenzo. Could could everybody just say in their hearts, um, just lift up your brother Lorenzo. He's Lencho on here, but Lorenzo, because he just lost his grandfather. And that's a really <laughs> Ugh, death is so hard. Dang that Adam and Eve, <laughs> right? Dang Adam and Eve. And so here's just a little side point. We have two more minutes until the teaching starts. <clears throat> here's a little side note. The people who say the law, the curse went away, the first thing to say to them is we still have death. People still die. When the curse is completely removed, there will be no more death. And that is when Yeshua returns. So... They try to say the law went away because, look, we, the curse is gone. No. Nope. We still die. We still die. And that's proving that the curse is still here on the earth. There's a prophetic time when it will be lifted. Yeshua takes the penalty. If we look, if we accepted his um, salvation, his gift of salvation, we're going to be covered for those sins. But the curse is still here for now. Um, let's see. Hi, Sherry. I'm assuming you meant that to me. My name's Melissa. A lot of people do call me Michelle, but I think that's prophetic because my name, as my mother had a, you know, back in the day, she didn't know if I was a girl or a boy, and my name was going to be Michael Paul. I don't think that 
goes without. <laughs> I think my name, if I was a boy, I was going to be Michael Paul. And, uh, and then, so the Melissa is kind of the equivalent of Devorah in Hebrew. So Melissa is the Greek equivalent of Devorah, De Deborah, which I thought was interesting also when I learned that. Hi, Linda. Hi, Kimberly. Hello. 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 Ooh, yes. Oh, goodness. Yave, please heal Heather. Please help. Please show her and teach her, of course, any root cause of it. Please help her to understand. Please deliver her and save her in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Hi, Jenna. Oh, Jenna, you're so sweet. Jenna, such okay, guys, we have one more minute. One more. That's okay, Sherry. I honestly don't care. My husband on our first date called me Melanie. <laughs> we laugh about it to this day. I don't really care because I'm nothing. Even outside, I was like, oh, Father God, I'm just so nothing. Like, if you ever need me to stop, like, teaching because I don't ever want to get in the way of you. And he's like, I told you to teach because I'm like, I don't think I'm anything. I know I'm nothing. And um, hi, Darlene. Um, I'm attending my first Messianic service this Saturday. I don't have one close by. Oh, wow. That's a long drive. Yes, Cassandra. So I already made a video this morning. It's 7.10, so we're going to start. I'm going to address this question. She asked, did they find a Nepha beep? It seems like it. they tested those seven fields again. Four of the seven had barley in the stage of a beep. If we wait till next month, much of that barley will be shattered, and it will not be able to be offered. So we had a really weird year. This is the first year in 23 years that I've been keeping the Passover and, and the unleavened bread. This is the first year this has happened. But I do know when I was outside that day, the father said, April 8th, the, the solar eclipse is a sign. But what he told me, and I, I felt it then, but he told me today, he said, Melissa, he said, Judaism is going to honor the new year um, on April 8th, no matter what. They're not going by the biblical way. Judaism already projected when they were going to celebrate Passover and whatnot thousands of years ago. And he said, and I have to meet them where they're at. And so I'm sending the solar eclipse. By the way, the solar eclipse is being chased now by the devil comet. Please go research that. It is really not to go unnoticed. Like you need to look what's going on because the sun is symbolic of Yeshua. No, we're not sun worshipers. The sun represents Yahweh, the light from Yahweh, and it's being covered, right? The solar eclipse, it's covered so we don't see its light and the devil comet's appearing. Whoa, whoa. Is this a new seven-year period we're, we're entering into? Possibly, yeah, take note, people, take note. Ooh, you've never had raw milk, Alex? Oh, it's so good. It's like so sweet. It's so much better than store milk. It's like, it, you can't, when I have to buy store milk on the two months that I have my cow dried up, and I only do organic, but raw milk is so, and it's so good. You know, it's one of the only foods that actually grow back your enamel on your teeth. Did you know that? I don't know. Okay, so you slurped. Donna. <laughs> That's my aunt, by the way, so she can tell me that. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Oh, Isaiah, you're sweet. Um, no, I often, I do. I feel like I'm nothing, and I, I'm like, oh, Father, I, you all know. Well, no, you don't all know. Those of you who have known me for a long time know that I begged Yahweh back in 2002 not to be the teacher. I was like, oh, no, don't speak through me. Oh, don't speak through me. And when I was 13 years old, the Holy Spirit fell on me, and I was going to speak in tongues, and I was so scared. I was like, no, 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 not in front of my family. Um, because <laughs> my family were very, like, not apostolic. <laughs> like, there's no raising of hands in that family, but I always did. But it was like, you know. Anyway, um, and so... I struggle, Isaiah, to be out there. I struggled to make these videos. God pushed me for years to make the podcast. God pushed me for years to make the YouTube video. I, it's the funniest thing, like my husband will tell you, I have an extremely low self-esteem, but a high level of obedience. <laughs> like I think I'm nothing, but I will obey God. And so I overcome all fears and anxiety to do it. But then I, I everything I do, I like, Every photo session I've ever had, I post the pictures and then I think, oh my gosh, I'm the worst photographer in the world and I'll take them down. And then my, I had to stop doing that because I would panic, like how bad I was. And Jim's like, they're good. And, but I do that with everything. And so I, in a way it's good because everything I say to you guys, like I beg Yahweh, I said, don't let him hear it if it's not your truth. Like, stop me. Let my channel be, t you know what I mean? I don't care. I don't care, Lord. I don't want to be right. I don't want to lead anybody astray. So don't let me ever speak anything contrary to your truth. Just like, 
like you could just delete my face, whatever, Lord, I don't care. So I think that's the heart we're supposed to have, but I don't know that I do have to have not so much negative self-talk, Isaiah. That was actually good. My husband gets after me a lot for that. Um, and so, okay, guys, we're going to start. So I, I know there's maybe a lot more questions. Praise Yahweh. We're going to have open time at the end. Um, I made a video today, a live video that I posted to my video section. So if you go on my page and look under the videos, you will see today's um, live teaching about Passover and how this is all happening. Before we begin, um, I do want to, to quickly, since we have everybody kind of here, it's starting time to point out something. When we have, we have a number of resources that are over in Israel looking for the Abib barley. Um, a week and a half ago, 10 days ago, there was a discrepancy between the witnesses. Some said there was just a little bit, but they think it would be ripe. Others said only the genetically modified field was ripe, and then this one, and they weren't sure. Some said yes, some said no. There was such a disparity, there was such a discrepancy between the reports that, honestly, I didn't feel comfortable from here declaring what. At first, if you saw my first video, I was like, yeah, it's the new year. And then I quickly pulled that down because I read more reports from people, and then I'm like, maybe we got to wait 10 days. And then I pulled that video down and then I was like, ah, and so I'm like, father, you're just going to show me. And all I heard in my ear was April 8th, a sign. I heard that. And then I heard, um, no, that's the word I heard. And I can't remember one other thing he showed me. He said, but they have to have enough upbeat barley mail for the entire assembly to bring it. So I was like, okay. And then Laura had asked me, should we wait? But I was thinking, well, no, because if you know, we, maybe we don't need to wait the 10 days now, because if they didn't, I was just, trying to figure it out too, like from here in America. But I did know April 8th is a sign. And I remember thinking when I heard that, I had this little voice say, but maybe it's a sign to the Jews in the world because they already assume that's the beginning of the year on the biblical calendar. And I was like, okay, because they're not going by the barley harvest. You have to remember, remember rabbinic Judaism doesn't follow the Torah. They follow the Talmud. They say they follow the Torah, but that, and that confuses people, but they don't actually follow the Torah. They set the precedent of the Talmud above the Torah. The Talmud are the extra laws that were codified after the Babylonian exile. Well, they began to be codified and orally transmitted during the Babylonian exile. They were written down after actually Yeshua rose from the dead, but they were quoting them and teaching them as doctrine at the time of Yeshua. And so Judaism projected thousands of years ago, all these dates, all these holidays, they decided not to go off the biblical way. And the Bible tells us that when we begin our new year, we must see Abib. It's, um, the B, Abib is a stage of barley ripeness, and it has to be in the, this specific grain stage where it would be ripened enough for Feast of First Fruits to bring it. And the entire assembly had to have enough to bring it. And it couldn't be too ripe where it would drop out because it was the first of the harvest to go to Yahweh. The first had to be brought to the temple. And so uh, 10 days ago, there was a really discrepancy. They didn't know if it would be ripe enough to have enough for the entire assembly of Israel. And, and so <laughs> what I knew the father told me is no matter what, the solar eclipse is assigned to the world because on most calendars that follow that rabbinic Judaism teaching, they believe that the new year is, um, is April 8th and that Passover is April 22nd. Now, getting back to the actual scriptural way, just like Yeshua was constantly rebuking their, their traditions of men and taking it back to scripture, scripture says we have to have the abit barley. We know we have to bring the first fruits before it falls to the ground. We know there was the plague that destroyed the barley during these times. So, that's why today, after hearing the report, I was like, I felt very confident in saying what I went back to. The very first video. <laughs> the very first one of the three. And so the first one, this March 11th, was the new year. Now, there's no, it's, there's no problem in not seeing it. And you've got to remember this. If we were in the land of Israel and had the temple, we would all be observing our fields firsthand. We wouldn't be going, because somebody said, you can't go in arrears. Um, <laughs> my wonderful friend from Montana. He says, you can't go in arrears. It's never right. But we wouldn't be. We're scattered right now. We're scattered in the dispersion and we can't bring our first fruits to Israel anyway. We can't take a lamb into our homes anyway right now, right? We have to wait till we're back in Jerusalem. And so there's no harm, no foul in this. We're waiting on reports of people who were searching the lands and they were confused. They were confused. And it's a good lesson for all of us to, rem to remember this, that walking with God means day by day, being able to hear what he's saying. Like Paul was told, don't tell the man not to go this way, that it's going to end in loss of life. Well, they went that way anyway. And then God said, hey, 
I guess I'm going to spare your life. So Paul wasn't a false prophet. He just, they had to continue walking that path. And then the men didn't listen. The ship ran aground and the people didn't have any loss of life. So they didn't have loss of life like Paul was the first fearing. There's, and you're going to see in the Bible that Yahweh does that. He, he sometimes will lead you in a way. I've had it happen where for him to get me to do something, he actually made me think I was doing something else because I didn't, I would have, for example, if I wouldn't have married my husband, if I had, right, because he wasn't a believer at the time. But then I, I know that Yahweh let me, I knew I was supposed to marry him, like he, right? And so I had to believe, I had to not, I don't know how to explain this, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you have to walk by faith and Yahweh directs you in the moment. Like, when he told me, for example, in 2003, we were moving, I didn't know where. He's like, you're moving. And I'm like, where? So I went and stuck a for sale sign in my yard. And eight months later, <laughs> eight months later, after we hadn't moved yet, I'm like, okay, we're moving. I'm like, okay, just happy, you know, whatever. And he told, told me to call my friend. And I called my friend. She came over that night, her and her husband. And sure enough, they ended up that night saying they wanted to buy our house. The next day they went, they got the money. Two weeks later, we sold and closed and went on the way. So at the right time, he told me who to call, invite them over. In fact, she ended up calling me because I kept ignoring the voice. It was just funny. So my point is, God doesn't always tell us the full story. Do you remember the disciples? They were like, oh, now we understood what he was talking about. You know, Daniel, where he gets all these prophetic visions, and he's like, I don't understand what you're telling me. And, the, and God says, well, it's not for you to understand. The angel says, it's not for you to understand. It's for people to come later. They're going to understand what you don't understand. You just are the the messenger. And often that'll happen to you. And what I have, have happened a lot to me from you guys is that many of you, I want to know right now what this dream means. Well, Joseph had to wait 17 years for his dream to come true. I had dreams that took, oh my goodness, I don't even know how many years, at least 15 years. I've had dreams that were 15 years in advance. I've had prophetic dreams that came three years in advance. And so one of the things just to remember is be humble, walk with God. He doesn't owe us an explanation. He's going to reveal it to us when it's needed because if he tells us too much too early, sometimes we mess up the plan. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So Passover this year, and I did make a video, so please go back and watch that video I posted today. Uh, but the actual... The day of rest is the 26th. So it's the sunset the 25th to sunset the 26th is the first day of rest. And then the last day of rest of the feast is the 31st through the first sunset to sunset of those dates. Okay. Hi, guys. Hi, Charlene. Okay. Now, let's begin with prayer. <clears throat> oh, Yahweh Elohim, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we thank you. We bless your name. Please guide us and lead us in the wilderness. Please lead us and teach us as we're walking through unknown territories and unknown paths. And Lord, even after 23 years of doing it, Lord, this is the first year it's been this confusing with Yabi Barley. And Father, thank you for teaching us humility and righteousness through this. Thank you for teaching us to wait on you and trust in you and hold fast to you. Thank you, Lord, that you're still going to meet the world where they are and you're going to give the sign. You're going to give the sign of the solar eclipse for your glory and that you're going to use it for your good because you say your name is Eye Asher Eye, I will be who I will be. And we believe that, Father God. We believe that you are righteous, holy, and just and never, ever changing, that your, your, your Torah is eternal and forevermore. And we thank you, Lord, that you will not cast us off for all we have done, but that you will redeem us, restore us, purify us, and cleanse us. Thank you, Lord, for the baptism of fire that is to come, even though it's going to be so hard, Father. Please strengthen us through it. We thank you in advance for helping to make us what you need us to be, Lord, what you created us to be. Thank you for those trials, because without those trials, we would not be who you need us to be. We would be stuck in our arrogance and our pride and our filth, and Father, as we approach the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Father God, would you shine your light into our hearts, put your Holy Spirit into the deepest, darkest crevices of our minds and our hearts. Anything within us, Lord, shine your light and get it out. Get all of the leaven out of us. Oh, we love you so much, Father. We're so thankful for you. Would you please heal those who need healing? Please, Yahweh Elohim, would you please teach those who need taught? All of us need taught. All of us need taught. Please come and teach tonight. But please really open the minds and ears and hearts of those who really need it, who are stuck in confusion. Yahweh, save your children from the Babylonian system. Anoint our lips to speak your truth for your glory, not for our own. May we never build our own systems. 
Oh, Yavi Elohim, will you come and teach tonight? Will you guide us and lead us? We bless your name. We glorify your name. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Okay, so we are on Isaiah 23. We were kind of rocking and rolling through some scriptures the other day. I don't think I can do that many chapters tonight because, because of the cheese whiz. Okay, by the way, if you have children, like I don't support cheese whiz because I think it has pork. But... Yes, 26th faith, um, 26th of the day of rest. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so when they go through the why stage, why, why, why? We always would say because, because my son would say because, instead of because, it was because, or we'd say just because of the cheese whiz, and that ended the conversation. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, no, so uh, March. Linda, it's going to be March 26th, so it's the 25th to the 26th. Okay, Isaiah 23. The burden, and you guys can ask more questions at the end or go back and watch the video I posted on the timelines under the videos, okay? The burden against Tyre. Wail, you sharp the ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste so that there is no house, no harbor from the land of Cyprus it is revealed to them. Be still, you inhabitants of the coastland, you merchants of Sidon, whom those who cross oops, <laughs> whom those who cross the sea have filled, and on great waters the grain of Shehor, the harvest of the river is her revenue, and she is a marketplace for the nation. So this is a seafaring nation. Now, historically, Tyre was um, just just right off the coast, like of Israel and Lebanon. They would often. Um, trade with the Western lands. And so you're going to see sometimes in here where this the Hebrew word for it is katim, which means Western lands. What we know is that Dan, Dan, the tribe of Dan, were the seafarers and they worked very closely with Tyre. We know prophetically in scripture, and please check out David Yair's teachings. I haven't read his stuff for years, like probably 20 years, but he has a lot of good information and I just don't have time to keep up with everything from everybody. But he linked Dan, uh, Dan, the tribe of Dan with Tyre and they went to what is modern day Britain. So when you talk about this, Britain colonized and was the seafaring, the ruler of the world for a very long time and only has been kind of cast down for the last 70 years. Interesting, the days of Queen Elizabeth, right? She, when she, after, um, after Israel became a nation and stuff, everything kind of went quiet with Britain. They didn't, they kind of lost their, ter their kingdom, their colonies just kind of became their own nations. And they just, it, a whole new era started of peace and silence from the tribe, from Britain. And Britain was inhabited, inhabited by Dan and Dan was linked to Tyre, Tyre and Tarshish. So when you think of Tyre and Tarshish in scripture and prophecy, it's often speaking about the British colonies and then thus into America um, because America was a British colony. So you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. It becomes pretty evident. Um, so be still, you inhabitants of the coastland, you merchants of Sidon, whom those who cross the sea have filled. And on great waters, the grain of Sihor, sorry, this is verse three again, the harvest of the river is her revenue and she is a marketplace for the nations. Be ashamed, O Sidon, for the sea has spoken, the strength of the sea saying, I do not labor nor bring forth children, neither do I rear young men nor bring up virgins. When the, when the report reaches Egypt, they also will be in agony at the report of Tyre. Cross over to Tarshish, wail you inhabitants of the coastland. Is this your joyous city whose antiquity is from ancient days, whose feet carried her far off to dwell? Who has taken counsel? Who has taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowning city whose merchants are princes, whose traders are the honorable of the earth? <clears throat> Yahweh Sivaot has purposed it to bring to dishonor the pride of all glory, to bring in contempt all the honorable of the earth. Overflow through your land like the river. Now it keeps talking about the river, the Nile, just so you know. Remember, the Nile is shaped very much like the Potomac River in America. America is the end time Egypt. Remember, we linked that in scripture a couple chapters ago. Don't forget all these things. So verse 10 again, overflow, overflow through your land like the river, O daughter of Tarshish. There is no more strength. 
He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. Yahweh has given a commandment against Canaan to destroy its strongholds. And he said, you will rejoice no more, O you oppressed virgin daughter of Sidon. Arise, cross over to Cyprus. Now Cyprus was a nation, a little island off the coast of Greece. Greece represents democracy <laughs> in scripture. So even if it's Symbol, if it, even if it's literal, it's also symbolic. So Cyprus was a little trade center from Greece. Greece represents democracy, and all of the Western world are democratic nations usually. I mean, they're getting away from the democratic nations, but they are still a democracy or democratic republic. You know what I mean? So arise, cross over to Cyprus. There also you will have no rest. Behold, the land of the Chaldeans, this people which was not, Assyria founded it for wild beasts of the desert. They set up its towers. They raised up its palaces and brought it to ruin. Wail, you ships of, Tar you ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. Now, listen. Listen. Turn, you got your ears on now, guys? If you've been zoning out, tell your kids to shh, shh, shh for just a minute. Now it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre will be forgotten 70 years according to the days of one king. That one king there can be ruler. Ruler. Who? Okay, listen. At the end of 70 years, it will happen to Tyre as in the song of the harlot. The harlot's a bad, like they cheat, right? Take a harp, go about the city, you forgotten harlot, you forgotten harlot. Make sweet melody, sing many songs that you may be remembered. And it shall be at the end of 70 years that Yahweh will deal with Tyre. She will return to her hire and commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. Her gain and her pay will be set apart for Yahweh. It will not be treasured nor laid up, for her gain will be for those who dwell before Yahweh to eat sufficiently and for fine clothing. That is a prophecy of the end days. Zechariah says the same thing. There's another prophecy too about in the end days that all of the all of the um, treasures of the of the nations against Jerusalem will be stored up. Now listen, I was told in 2002, that this was about England. And who just ruled exactly 70 years? Who just ruled exactly 70 years and then died? Queen Elizabeth. It's no coincidence that we have, she just died. She just died. We know that the Antichrist is from the tribe of Dan, <laughs> linked to the Catholic Church. Right? So whether whether it's an American or British person, it could be either. Some people think Barack Obama, some people think Trump, some Trump, Barack Obama, both of them fit the bill very well. Some people think it uh, could be Prince Charles. All of them, you can literally in the Hebrew Dramatia somehow get their names to equal 666. And yeah, they all kind of fit the bill. There's a statue of Prince Charles in South America calling him the savior of the world. He, this was built in like 2009. He's in a loincloth. He has, he's on standing on the globe and he calls him the savior of the world. Um, the, the, the queen and the whole palace, the royal palace, they claim to have the lineage of David. They claim to be the Jews, like the, the, the lineage of David. They're not. That's blasphemous, right? That's blasphemous, but they claim to be um, of the tribe of Judah, they say that they have David's chair in their um, in their uh, little palace there. Also, look at this. Look at the crest of the royal British the British royal family. Look at it. Go look at it. Go look at it. That lion. Go look at that. If there's prophecy <laughs> about the Bible. So when Yahweh told me Tyre, which we know prophetically, I mean, for I've heard it for over twenty years that Tyre was. Tyre and Tarshish are written in America. That it says they're going to be forgotten. 70 years, the days of one ruler. It doesn't have to just be king here. That doesn't just mean man. And then Queen Elizabeth died exactly. She ruled exactly 70 years. And now we got the solar eclipse. And this is beginning a new year. Is this beginning a seven-year agreement of something? Who was the only nation? What was the one, what was the one ally nation that wouldn't, did not want Israel to become a nation? was it? Britain. 
Do you know that Britain was the one who fought? Did you know that Britain, England fought vehemently against Israel becoming a nation and they wanted it to remain Palestine? Did you know it never was Palestine before? Like that's ridiculous because Palestine, like it was called the Arab nations. There was, it wasn't even Palestine, it, but then they now pretend it was their homeland. No, it wasn't. Okay. So this verse, listen again to what it said. So be watching in this world scene something with either the Brit British, Britain or the British colonies. Tyre, Tyre, I don't know how you say it. Tyre will be forgotten 70 years according to the days of one ruler. At the end of 70 years, it will happen to Tyre's in the Song of the Harlot. Blah, 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 blah. She will return to her hire. So be watching for something to rise up soon and commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. Something's coming soon. I believe it. Is it the Liga 10? Before whom three rise? And out of which one rises preeminently? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. 24. Behold, Yahweh makes the earth empty and makes it, it makes it waste. This is talking about the tribulation, guys. So we know this is in the end days. This is a prophetic picture of forward movement. This wasn't just in Isaiah's time. This is talking about now. Because remember, it said the men were going to be made more rare than the gold of Ophir. Okay, so behold, Yahweh makes the earth empty and makes, its, makes it waste, distorts its surface, and scatters abroad its inhabitants. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the creditor, so with the debtor. Basically, judgment's coming to all. The land shall be entirely emptied and utterly plundered, for Yahweh has spoken this word. The earth mourns and fades away. The world languishes and fades away. The haughty people of the earth languish. Now, do you remember the book of Habakkuk where it says, I think it's Habakkuk, pray for righteousness and humility that we may be hidden in the day of wrath. Let's pray. Make sure we're praying. I don't know if it's Habakkuk now. I don't know what book it's in. Pray for righteousness and humility so we can be hidden in that day. Because the humble, the haughty, they're really going down. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants. I want you to highlight this. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws broken the Torah, changed the ordinance. Oh, they're keeping Sunday as Sabbath now instead of the biblical Sabbath. They're doing Christmas and pagan holidays such as Easter instead of the true biblical holidays of Passover, Feast of First Fruits, Unleavened Bread. They changed the ordinance and they broken the everlasting covenant. The covenant wasn't until the time of Messiah and then it was going to go away. The covenant was everlasting for any Israelite or Gentile. Exodus 12, 49, Leviticus 19, 33 to 34, Leviticus 17, Isaiah 56, um, Numbers 15, 15 to 16, Ezekiel 47. It says same law for Israelite and native born. No, Israelite and Gentile. Sorry, you can tell I'm a little tired. The earth is going to be judged and defiled during this tribulation because they broke the laws, changed the ordinances, and broke the everlasting covenant. Don't let anybody tell you, don't let anybody tell you not to obey the law. The Antichrist, we are told many times, the Antichrist is the man of lawlessness. Daniel 7.25 says the Antichrist will be the one who tries to change God's times and laws. That was the Catholic Church. All European leaders are tied to the Catholic Church, even if they say they broke away. The Church of England is still very Catholic. They might not like the Pope, but they do everything the Pope says. The Church of England worships on Sunday. In America, they pretend they broke away from the Pope. The Protestant churches, baloney, 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 baloney. They worship on Sunday. That's the Catholic Church institution. They worship pagan holidays, Christmas and Easter. Those are pagan days. Those are Catholic church. And then we got to go back to the Bible. Okay. Verse six, therefore the earth, <laughs> therefore the curse has devoured the earth and those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men are left. There's no rapture people. There's judgment. 
And these phony baloney Christians who don't follow God at all, they said some magic pill Jesus prayer, believing in Jesus, but they don't believe in him because they don't commit to him. What is it? John chapter two, verse 21 says Yeshua knew their hearts. So he didn't commit to them. They believed in him, but he didn't commit to them. Why? Because he knew it was in their heart. When your heart is filled with lawlessness, believe me, Yahweh's not just going to be your magic genie. He doesn't just serve your needs. You are to serve him. You are created to be his servant. He is righteous, holy, and just. And the curse is going to devour the, world, devour the earth because we've got children changing sex. We have little kids pretending they're dogs. We have homosexuality pastors, homosexual pastors. We have women dressing like prostitutes, pretending they're righteous. We have men committing adultery. We have everything wicked and they think they're going to be raptured out because they're so righteous because they said a magic pill Jesus prayer? What? The disciples who loved God so much were all killed, died gruesome deaths. Every prophet. If we see the precedent of our Messiah and the people who loved God, we are not getting out of here without being refined and humbled and persecuted. We don't get some tea party watching the, the last Super Bowl on earth. We're not up there watching, you know, like the, the, the Kentucky Derby. We, we don't get that, people. We're going to be hungry, hard-pressed, destroyed, distraught. What did we read in Isaiah, what, two, two times ago? The, the, I think it was chapter 4. It is to, this, the punishment that's coming is to purge away the filth of the daughters of Zion. Is to, is to reconcile us for our God, to prepare us for our God. It's to make us pure and holy, guys, because we're not. We're not. We have been so wicked, and that is why next Monday night we are going to be mourning. We, our sins of our our sins and the sins of our forefathers, got us cast out here to America. This is not the promised land, and we need to hit our knees and say, "Oh, Father God, forgive us," just like Nehemiah did. Father God, forgive us for our sins and our trespasses and those of our fathers. We have acted unrighteously, like Daniel did. And then we say, please restore us. Please bring us back. You didn't see Daniel or Nehemiah arrogantly get up and do the Passover outside of the land. They waited. They prayed for restoration. They hit their knees. They fasted. They did whatever it took to be penitent before Yahweh. And this is the most arrogant generation ever. Everybody has their 15 minutes of theme. Selfies here. Selfies there. Everybody has a self-diagnosed problem. Everybody's a victim. Everything's about me, 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 me. What? Pastors, Messianic rabbis, everybody taking people's money to preach and to, to teach lies? And we're supposed to be working for our king. Moses didn't get paid. Elijah didn't get paid. They were humble. They were perfect before Yahweh. They were walking in humility. Goodness gracious people, who do we think we are? People today listen to the worldly music, the TV shows, the everything going in, the filth, the filth, the filth. And yet, we get raptured out. No, no kiddos. There's no rapture coming on April 8th. Some people might die. I don't know. I don't know that some big judgment's not coming from Yahweh. I don't know. I don't know. Might be a sparing too. I don't know. Okay, so the earth is defiled because of our sin. The curse has devoured the earth because of our sin. And there's going to be very few men left. The new wine fails, the vine languishes. This is verse seven. The new vine, wine fails, the vine languishes, all the merry hearted sigh. The mirth of the tambourine ceases, the noise of the jubilant ends, the joy of the harp ceases, and they shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up so that none may go in. There is a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. Do you see why the days this tribulation is going to come upon them like a thief in the night, like the days of Noah? Because remember, in the days of Noah, water covered the earth and Noah was put in an ark. He didn't get raptured out. People, you and I right now need to be humbling our hearts right now before the Lord God, before his judgment hits. We need to prepare ourselves in humility and righteousness before the tribulation hits. Because when the darkness hits, then at least we will be prepared spiritually and hopefully physically. 
it's going to come upon these people like a thief in the night, and they're going to turn and curse their God like we read in Isaiah 8. Be ready. Be ready. Our God is about to deliver his fury to the earth, and he is going to baptize us with fire to purify us. Verse 12, in the city desolation is left and the gate is stricken with destruction. When it shall be thus in the midst of the land among the people, it shall be like the shaking of an olive tree, like the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. So who's going to be left? Not much, just like a little bit of grapes, like a little bit of, little bit of olives. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of Yahweh. For the cry, they shall cry aloud from the sea. We're going to sing for the majesty of Yahweh. We are no longer going to herald ourselves. Please, let's stop right now. We're nothing. We need to sing for the majesty of Yahweh. Therefore, glorify Yahweh in the dawning light, the name of Yahweh Elohim of Israel in the coastlands of the sea. From the ends of the earth, we have heard songs, glory to the righteous. But I said, I am ruined. I am ruined. Woe to me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Indeed, the treacherous dealers have dealt, dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall be that he who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he who comes up from the midst of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth are shaken. The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. This is talking about cataclysmic events of volcanoes, earthquakes, fissures happening. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it. And remember the vision I had? Angela might remember when I had the vision or Christina. I was taken up to the heavens just a couple months ago. I literally left my body and I was sitting with Yeshua and I saw the earth engulfed in fires and smoke and volcanoes. It was not pretty. And the father, Yeshua, it was Yeshua, not the father. He looked at me, he said, Mel, the only thing going to help my people through this coming tribulation is righteousness, humility, and doing like the, 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 the obedient acts of God and love. And he was talking about the things of righteousness. And he said, and they're arguing about the shape of the earth. He goes, that's Satan's distraction. But I saw it all engulfed. Like there was cataclysmic events everywhere. His transgression shall be heavy upon it and it will fall and not rise again. Verse 21. Now, here's what we know. We know that the earth the mountains of Mount Jerusalem will be raised up and the hill. So it's not like the earth is actually going to go away. This is not the time of the new Jerusalem. This is talking about before the millennial reign, the thousand, the seventh period of a thousand years on earth. So this is poetic language again, when it says it's going to fall and not rise again. We're, we're literally told that the, um, all the mountains will be brought low, but the hill of Jerusalem will rise up. And remember we read in Isaiah chapter 2, wait, just a couple of verses ago about this time after the tribulation, that the law is going to go forth from Zion across the earth. And people, like a child's going to live to like a hundred, right? That the lion and the, the um, what did it say? The lion and the lamb are going to lay down together and a viper's not going to bite a child, child's hand. So he's really putting upon this earth a period of peace after this tribulation because we will have been humbled and brought into subjection under our King Yeshua. Verse 21, it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh will punish on high the host of exalted ones. So that's like the fallen angels and the kings of the earth and on the earth, the kings of the earth. They will be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and will be shut up in the prison. Listen, after many days, they will be punished. So this is that, that many days here. Remember it says Satan is locked up for 1,000 years and then let out at the end. So what we remember from the books of Ezekiel and Revelation, Satan is locked up for 1,000 years during this millennial reign. He and some of these haughty kings, at the end of 1,000 years, he is let out one more time with Gog and Magog. That's both Revelation and Ezekiel to come one more time against the world. And then at that point, Yeshua eternally judges him. That's what this is referring to. They will be shut up in prison after many days, they will be punished. So after many days, then they're going to be let out one more time for that final battle at the end of the millennial reign where Gog and Magog come with Satan 
and boom, that's when Yeshua kiboshes everything. That's when the new Jerusalem descends and the white throne judgment happens. Okay, then the moon will be disgraced and the sun ashamed for Yahweh Sevaot will reign on Mount Zion in Jerusalem and before his elders gloriously because at the time of the new Jerusalem is finally when we have no more sun, moon, and stars. I'm gonna quickly pause and see if there is any... Hi, Hannah. Hi, sweetie. Uh, I didn't see you get on yet. Um, Any questions? Okay. Yeah, the earth's not flat. The earth is not flat, Randy. So I don't know if, if you, um, somebody was saying that. Um, right, I understand NASA says all that. I'm not following NASA. I've been the biggest hater. I was, a, I was an elementary school teacher. I hated the science institutions. I fought evolution um, with my biology professor. I was very strong, but I definitely can see in scripture where it doesn't say it's flat. I was taken in a vision to the heavens with, with Yeshua himself. Um, the earth was literally made to totter on its axis. It's, it's spinning faster now. That only happens. You can't have a solar eclipse with a flat earth model. You can't have the moon phases with the flat earth model. There's just a lot of, you can't have time zones with the flat earth model. So we're going to go, that's a different day. But um, anyway, I don't argue those things. I love everybody, even if you believe that. But this is not that place right now. Um, um Okay, yeah, so it's time for his holy judgment. You got it. Noah was rescued. Right. So remember, for 20 years, some of us have been, telling, have been told to prepare places in the wilderness. Some of us have been preparing to go through this tribulation, meaning we've been storing up food, seeds, animals, getting our farmsteads ready. A ton of us have, we were told a long time ago, and there's people for the last 20 to 30 years been doing that. So he will protect us. At the same point, he says many of his saints will die. I mean, the scripture is clear that, and that's also a protect. I mean, you can't touch our souls, right? So it says the saints, the number of the saints will be um, completed. Um, the you know the the fifth seal, uh, um, or is it the yeah it's the fifth seal? The saints under the altars, under the altar, they had to wait until their number was completed. The number of the saints who would be headed and martyred for their faith. Um, it says Satan will wear us out. It says we're going to be persecuted. It says Satan persecutes the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yeshua. That's in Revelation 12. So yeah, we got to hold on kiddos. There's no preacher of rapture. We're not, okay. So, um, oh, that's no Karen. That's not the rapture. That's at the end of the tribulation. So if you understood the biblical feasts in Moedim, you would understand that when it's talking about him coming at the sound of a trumpet, that's the feast of trumpets. It's called Yom Teruah in Hebrew. And it's the only day, in, uh, 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 the only biblical holiday of which we never know the day or the hour in advance. Um, Leviticus 23 talks about it. Zechariah 14 literally makes the prophecy of his second coming at that day. Um, it says not at night, not at, not, it's not in the day, not at night, but at evening it shall come that he shall return. And if you understood the biblical ways, you would understand that the seventh, the first day of the seventh month, Yom Teruah, is we only, we know when that day is when we see the visible new moon sighting, and there's a three day period over which it could be possible. So nobody ever knows the day or the hour because of that month of any month. To be on, you have to be watching and waiting expectantly for the visible new moon sighting. So people take it out of context when they don't understand the whole of Scripture. So if you don't know Genesis to Malachi, you can make up whatever you want the New Testament to say, but it does it's just not true. So we have to go back to what it was talking about and what it was referring to. And Paul understood, like Matthew 24 and 25 says, Yeshua will return after the tribulation of those days okay so Yeshua will return after the tribulation of those days and we're told it's that evening it shall happen at the visible new moon sighting on the Yom Teruah and so that's not talking about a preacher of rapture that's talking about at the end after we've been refined for him um um, John, I think it's dangerous to play that game because you're going to be still in hearing, see, there's a huge delusional spirit, even stronger going to go through the church very soon. And I, very, very soon. It's already deluded. It's going to get stronger, the delusion. And we're told to come out of Babylon. And so when we, we came out and we were to share with people from outside of the system. And I have, I mean, for 20, almost 20, this is my 23rd Passover, um, that we've kept. So we just share from outside of it and Yahweh yeah, protects you then. Because you wouldn't go hang out in the whorehouse to hang with them, right? You would invite them to come somewhere else, right? Okay, or the drug, you wouldn't go to a crack house while they're having a crack party. You kind of invite them out and meet them on the streets. Else. Um, if, okay, um, you got it, Randy, good job. Um, but he comes in the clouds. 
he does come to the earth. It says that. But see, if you don't know the whole scripture, Karen, if you only know the quote, see, the New Testament is talking about the quote, Old Testament. He, he it literally says he descends to the Mount of Olives. Read Zechariah 14. And everybody knows he descends with it. What most Christians say, he comes twice. He comes on the, he does come on the clouds. We meet him in the clouds from all around the world. Those of us who aren't in Jerusalem, if you're in Jerusalem, well, you're already there. If you're in Israel, you're already there. You meet him and then they descend. It says, he says he comes to the Mount of Olives with his saints with him. And so you just have to know the whole Bible. It's easy to get unfounded if you just know a few random verses and don't take any letter, don't take any verse out of context because none of these ch books of the Bible were written as a book. They are with, I mean, with chapters and verses, they were written as an entire book together. Um, so you come out of Babylon by stopping to do, you don't do the Sunday worship, you don't do Easter, you don't do Christmas, you don't do the Babylonian mythology traditions because modern Christianity is based on Babylonian mythology and that was instituted in 321 AD primarily and so we come out of that because nobody lives in Babylon Iraq so we do know that it's coming out of Babylon um, spiritually symbolically and Sunday was the Babylonian day of worship because they were sun worshipers it's the day of the sun god that's why it's called Sunday so um, we, I like to use the new King James version Bible Estelle. It's the most accurate. Well, NASB is the most accurate, but I like the NKJV and NASB. The NKJV reads a little better and more fluently, and it's easier to understand in English because God didn't want you to be confused. <laughs> the King James version is terrible for that. Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's see. Okay. Truth. You do, you get out of Babylon by the word alone. Yeah, there you go. Um, No, you shouldn't go to church. Jenny, you should not. You need to meet with fellow believers who are like-minded, who are the remnant who have come out. Shore yourself up. Meet with us. on. We meet on Saturday, Friday night Zooms. And um, so tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, we'll be on Zoom. Saturday morning, 10 a.m. here on the live. Um, you need to get with like-minded believers. There might be local people with you who, who are fellowshipping and keeping the biblical ways. Stay out of religion. Just get in the word of God. Sometimes, too, you go through a period of aloneness with just Yahweh so he can speak to you and you know you're not just following man. Get in the word. Um, oh, somebody said, what tea? Oh, I'm sorry. This is this is um, Numi's Amber Sun. So, <laughs> random question. I do the Numi. Can you see Numi? Amber Sun. It's so good. Okay, a few more questions. Oh, and I'm not trying to assume, Karen. I appreciate you too. What I'm saying is what people will do is they'll take one verse out of here. People will misquote Galatians to me all the time as well. They'll take a verse and you, you can't take a verse. You can't take a verse because there's all the context that has to go with it. So it's extremely dangerous. So yeah, no offense. I just, I get thousands of these, literally thousands of these questions a week that I have to, it's like kind of the same real answer. <laughs> it's like, yeah, don't go out of context. Make sure you know this. Um, um, yeah, exactly. Right, so there's no pre-trib rapture. We meet him in the clouds after come to Zechariah 14 says we come. I do not like the complete Jewish Bible. I do not like the complete Jewish Bible. David Stern's complete Jewish Bible. I have it. It has a definite agenda. Let me tell you that. <laughs> not, not accurate. Um, um, no, thank you guys. You kind of know me. How do I get on your Zoom? Okay, could... I will po I will send you that link if somebody if somebody I don't think you can post a picture in the comments. Would you, Julie Block? Okay, would you send me a message, and I'll give you the Zoom link. Also, let me um. <laughs> I try to make myself notes and then forget all the notes, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna post the Zoom link as soon as we're done. Okay, um, Friday Zooms are amazing. Yeah, they are really are good. Please repeat the days. Nicole, would you remind me which days? Are you talking about the Passover days or the Zoom days? You, you let me know. Um, I have the book of Yahweh and everything you say is in. Oh, interesting. So we have tribulation. Okay, so we have. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeanette. That was confusing, huh? No, we have the, the seven-year agreement. In the middle of the seven-year agreement, the last three and a half years are like, Elijah, spirit of Elijah running from Jezebel. It's the tribulation. So those of us in the spirit of Elijah, 
which I hope you're there, <laughs> um, who declaring the truth of God. Jezebel from the church, the Christian church, is going to be persecuting us. And at the end of that three and a half years on um, Yom Teruah, Yeshua will descend, and we, those from around the world will meet who aren't there in Israel will meet him in the clouds at the end of that seven-year period and then descend on Zechariah 14, says Mount of Olives. And then we'll have the final battle of Armageddon for 10 days, on day of judgment, he judges the world. Five days later, we have the we start the tabernacling with him. And it says in the book of Ezekiel, I think it's 36, for seven months, we will send out a search party to cleanse the land, to search for all the dead bodies. Ezekiel 45 says that Yeshua then cleanses the temple on Abib first of the following year after the tribulation ends, at which will be in the fall. Um, so five months later, then we he cleanses the temple. We... He reinstitutes, reinstates Passover and all those offerings. Go read Ezekiel 45, 18 to the end in particular. Um, and then we have that thousand years with him as king on earth. At the end of a thousand years, Gog and Magog are led out with Satan. And then boom, they're kiboshed. The white throne judgment happens. The new Jerusalem descends to the earth. And then it's eternity. Oh, guys, let's run the race. Let's not sin is so stupid, right? We don't want to like, we don't want to like suffer eternally for a stupid consequence. Do not give in to sin. Do not be baited by Satan. It is not worth it. Keep our eyes on the prize, right? Um, meeting night. Oh, oh, Alex, thank you. So there you go. There's the, there's the Zoom link. Um, Julie, there's the Zoom link right there. Alex just posted it. Um, the Tree of Life Bible, <clears throat> I've heard some good things about um, how do you learn all this? I feel like, um, Estelle, when father called me in 2002, he had me do a 13 day fast and I had been praying for him to sear his word on my heart. And he literally, he just like whoosh, seared his word on my heart. And I read the Bible. That's the book I read. I don't read novels. I don't read other people's writings about the Bible. I read the Bible and then I read it in Hebrew and I spend time with him. That's how you know it. No other distractions, just him. Mm, I'm sorry, Kenneth. Well, I guess you better get to America. Um, where do I begin to learn outside this bad language? Okay, let's go to the podcast. Um, Danielle, Christina, Angela, could one of you link the podcast? I think the part. Oh. Sorry, my son is calling me, um, but I have to tell him something. Um, so link the podcast. Sweetie, I'm on a Zoom. I'm on a live teaching. Oh, okay, love you. Love Bye. you. Bye. My son and his wife are on their honeymoon. So I'm like, I better tell him. I want to at least see his face. Um, I would start with it. So um, Kiona, join us tomorrow night on the Zoom. They're such a beautiful group of people. Um, join us Saturday morning, 10 a.m. for a live teaching. Look through my other videos under the video section of my page. Go to my YouTube channel where a lot of those videos are. It's easier because you can slow it down, speed it up. You can pause it. You can go forward, backwards. YouTube makes it easier to watch the videos, I believe. And then also the podcast, chapter by chapter through the Bible is the best thing. And then feel free to join us um, and ask me questions. I have physically hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of questions a week. So just ask me I, I get to it as soon as I can. Um, and the most important thing is seek Father, ask Him to teach you, but getting His Word from Genesis chapter 1. That's why I think the podcast is always the best place to begin because it's you and Yahweh reading the Word. So you know what? Nobody can deceive you, right? That's why you can't, you couldn't get me to, to do Passover in my house. I know what Leviticus 17 says. I know what Deuteronomy 15, um, 6, um, 16 says. I know what it shows in 2 Chronicles 30. I know what Ezra and Nehemiah did. Like, I know the word of God, so you can't get me to move. Right? You need to be so steadfast in your faith because God read, God says it and you read it, not because somebody told you. See, that's why with this whole Abib Barley thing, I couldn't give you guys, I didn't really know what to tell you other than I said the solar eclipse is a sign. I feel like I'm going to commit to that being the new year for now until I know more. Um, I didn't know because I know somebody has said, should we wait 10 days? I was like, I don't know. I'm just going to commit to that. And then because I got these signs, just to commit to that for now. And then, but then when I saw the stuff today, her reports, I think, okay, that does seem like it'll be too right past if, if we wait another month. So we're just going with the flow on that. I can't be solid on that. But what I can be solid on, boom, Saturdays is, Friday sunset to Saturday sunset to Sabbath. We are to not do pagan holidays. We are to do God's ways. You know what I mean? Those things, I'm never going to eat pork. 
ain't that bad to die anyway because we're going to be with the Lord. There's no, I could be starving to death. I'm not going to eat pork. I'm not going to eat humans. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? So you have to be so f steadfast in your faith because you know what the word of God says. And that's what I push many of you to do. I don't want you to say, well, Melissa said, who cares? Who cares what Melissa said? Who Really, really. I mean, I mean it. Who cares what Melissa says? Who cares what Kenneth says? Who, who cares what Danielle says? Who cares? God doesn't. You know what God cares about? What he says. So his word, if I speak, God's not. Like, when, remember when Joshua um, was with, um, before the angel, and he says, whose side are you on? And the angel said, because Joshua says, are you on our side or theirs? And the angel goes, neither. I'm on the side of Yahweh. That's all of us just need to be on Yahweh's side, just for truth, for righteousness, for Okay, um, okay. so Karen, the Zoom link is above. If somebody, <laughs> Alex, I'm so sorry. Can you maybe copy it and post it again? Okay. Um, oh, no, it's the Christians going to persecute us. It's, I guarantee you. The only, I don't ever get persecuted from non-believers. I am persecuted constantly by Christians who call me false prophetess. They call me all sorts of names because I say to obey the Torah. For 22 years, going on 23 years, the only people who have ever persecuted me are those of faith. The only people who persecuted our Messiah were those of faith. The Pharisees and Sadducees are the Christians of yesteryear. Today, the Christians are the Pharisees of them. I mean, the, the, the Christians are the modern day Pharisees. And they persecute hard, the religious ones. They get mad, vicious. They'll call you names. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be persecuted for your faith. Um, there you go, Laura. Good job. Thank you. Okay. Guys, I'm going to keep reading because there's a lot of questions. I can't even keep up. Thank you for commenting. Thank you. If I miss something that's extremely important, we'll ask it at the end. Chapter 25. Oh, I love this. Oh, Yahweh, you are my Elohim. I will exalt you. I will praise your name for you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For you have made a city a ruin, a fortified city a ruin, a palace of foreigners to be a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, the strong people will glorify you. The city of the terrible nations will fear you. For you have been a strength to the poor. And remember, poor is always synonymous with also not just Earth, not just poor in monetary, monetary ways, but like humble, humility. So for you have been a strength to the poor. Be humble so he can be your strength. A, a strength to the needy in his distress. A refuge from the storm. A shade from the heat. For the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. You will reduce the noise of aliens. That means strangers or Gentiles. Don't think it means like aliens from outer space. You will reduce the noise of Gentiles as heat in a dry place, as heat in the shadow of a cloud. The song of the terrible ones will be diminished. And in this mountain, in this mountain, Mount Zion, Yahweh Sevaot will make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the lees. So lee is an open green meadow of fat things full of marrow. So like rich, abundant foods of well-refined wines on the lees. This is talking about the great battle. They were, that's the dead people, just so you know what he's referring to here. He's like making a feast of the dead. A little bit gruesome here. And he will just listen. Oh my gosh, listen to this. Please, please highlight this verse. And he will destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And Adonai Yahweh will wipe away tears from all their faces. See, people in people errantly teach. See, when Jesus Yeshua rose from the dead, do you know why the veil tore? Because he rose from the dead. The veil that spread over all the nations is the death. He will swallow up death forever. Yeshua was our first fruits from the dead. Thus the veil tore. We will someday rise from the dead and be able to be in the presence of God behind that veil. The veil in the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle, the veil separates the Holy of Holies from the, from the, um, Outside the Holy of Holies, you had the, the, linen, the linen curtains five and five, and then you had the goat curtains five and six, right? So you had the Holy of Holies from the rest of the tabernacle or temple. That Holy of Holies is Yeshua. That's what it's symbolic of, is Yahweh. Yahweh, Yeshua, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. 
that veil that separated us from ever seeing his face was death because of sin. Sin created a veil where we had to die. When Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, there was a veil put between us and God where we could never have risen from the dead and gone through that veil. The old, now, because Yeshua rose from the dead and he was our first fruits from the dead, there is a resurrection for us, right? So some of us will rise at the beginning of the millennial reign. Some of us will rise at the end of the millennial reign to the great white throne judgment because the beginning of the millennial reign are some of the saints who get to come back and reign with him. At the end of the millennial reign, you have the great white throne judgment. That veil will be torn. It is torn. Not because now we can enter physically the Holy of Holies. Don't you dare do that. You'll get in trouble. Remember the Gentiles, the Gentiles um, trample the courtyards for 42 months. Read Revelation and Daniel, please. Don't be a part of the bad people trampling and defiling the courts because there is a temple going to be built that will be defiled by the Gentiles. We don't want to be the Gentiles that defile it. We want to be reverent because the temple on earth is a picture of the temple and tabernacles in the heavens, correct? So we know that there's a, a, a reverence that must be instituted and must be in our hearts when we are in the presence of God and when we are in the presence of his temple. But <clears throat> what symbolically happened is that that veil was tore and the veil physically tore on earth to be assigned to us, not so that now every single person gets to enter the Holy Holies here on earth. We're told in the book of Ezekiel, specifically chapters 44, 45, and 46, when Yeshua Jesus returns, he's the high priest and the king, and that also the sons of Zadok will offer the sacrifices. Please go read it. Not just every person, even the other Levites don't get to do it. So there is an order still. But from at the, at the resurrection, that veil will have been torn. So in eternity, that death will be swallowed up. And we have the ability now to rise from the dead because of what Yeshua did for us. Does that make sense? Are you guys following me on that? That veil, that was the, the reason the veil tore in the temple was because it, sig, it symbolized what death, the death, the barrier between us and God. But through Yeshua's blood, that veil was open so we can rise from the dead eventually and be with our Messiah in his presence. Okay. Verse 8, again, he will swallow up death forever, and Adonai Yahweh will wipe away tears from all faces, the rebuke of his people. He will take away from all the earth, for Yahweh has spoken. And it will be said in that day, behold, this is our Elohim. We have waited for him, and he will save us. We're going to wait for him during the tribulation, and he will save us. This is Yahweh. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Yeshua, that's the root word there, right? For on this mountain, the hand of Yahweh will rest and Moab shall be trampled down under his feet as straw is trampled down for the refuse heap. And he will spread out his hands in their midst as a swimmer reaches out to swim and he will bring down their pride together with the trickery of their hands, the fortress of the high fort of your walls. He will bring down, lay low and bring to the ground, down to the dust. Mm. This is getting good. Okay, any, wow. Wow, that's a lot of comments. I don't. Okay. I'm gonna keep reading because that was a lot of comments and I was like overwhelmed even thinking about trying to look at those. At the end, if there's a pertinent question that didn't get answered, please message again. Isaiah 26, I love this. In that day, this song shall be sung, will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Elohim will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation, which keeps the truth, may enter in. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Keep your mind on Yahweh. Trust in him. No anxiety. Cast out that anxiety. When you have anxiety, that means your mind is not stayed on him. When you have depression, that means your mind is not stayed on him. You will have perfect peace when your mind is stayed on Yahweh because you will know he is king, he is in control, and you are submitted to him. 
Trust in Yahweh forever, for in Yah, Yahweh is everlasting strength, for he brings down those who dwell on high, the lofty city. He lays it low, he lays it to the ground, he brings it down to the dust. The foot shall tread it down, the feet of the poor, the humble, and the steps of the needy. The way of the just is uprightness, almost upright. You weigh the path of the just. Yes, in the way of your judgments, O Yahweh, we have waited for you. His judgments are found in the Torah. The judgments, you guys, it's an open book test for you. You will be judged by the law of Moses. It says that very specifically in the book of Hebrews, but we kind of already know by reading the whole scriptures. So in the way of your judgments, so Yahweh, we have waited for you. We know Yahweh is going to judge the wicked. He says in Revelations chapter 2 and 3, he judges us according to our works. And I just read that again yesterday and I can't remember where. Somewhere in the Psalms. The desire of our soul is for your name and for the remembrance of you. And if that's not your heart, then you don't know him and you're not born again yet. The desire of our souls should be for his name, not our name. We don't have named group. We're not named ministries. We don't go about starting our own ministries. We work for him. Our desire is for his name and the remembrance of him. With my soul, I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me, I will seek you early. For when your, listen, when your judgments, your Torah, when your judgments from the Torah are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. The Torah teaches us what is right and wrong. Let, and we're told that, right? Even when he gave the Torah, he said, this is life to you. This is your wisdom. This is your righteousness. Let grace be shown to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, he will deal unjustly. So this is the wicked. And will not behold the majesty of Yahweh. So some people just are never going to get it. The wicked are just going to be wicked. Yahweh, when your hand is lifted up, they will not see, but they will see and be ashamed for their envy of people. Yes, the fire of your enemies shall devour them. Because see, they were jealous and envious of God's people. Who wouldn't be jealous of our Yahweh? Who wouldn't want to be known as his people? But they won't submit. Yahweh, you will establish peace for us, for you have also done all our works in us. O Yahweh, our Elohim, masters beside you have had dominion over us, but by you only we make mention of your name. They are dead. They will not live. They are deceased. They will not rise. Therefore, you have punished and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. They will rise at judgment day. It's not what he's saying. He's saying they're not going to rise back up on the earth. You have increased the nation, O Yahweh. You have increased the nation. You are glorified. You have expanded all the borders of the land. Yahweh, in trouble, they have visited you. They poured out a prayer when your chastening was upon them. As a woman with child is in pain and cries out in her pangs when she draws near the time of her delivery, so have we been in the sight of your sight, O Yahweh. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. That's a funny picture. I'm sorry, guys. Just a light in the mood there. It's like, just like farting. <laughs> it's like fluffing. Fluffing. We have not accomplished any deliverance in the earth, nor have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Your dead shall live. Together with my dead body, they shall arise. Because it says we haven't done anything. and Nothing has been brought forth yet. We haven't caused any deliverance. It's only going to come from Yahweh. And we are going to rise from the dead. This is a prophetic picture of the resurrection. Yeshua rises first, and then we rise. Awake and seeing you who dwell in dust, for your dew is like the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. This is talking about the end of days, when the dead rise from the dead. Come, my people, enter your chambers. Okay, I'm here to give my life to God. Oh, awesome. Uh, let me finish this. Listen to this, guys. This isn't... Listen... Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. He was just talking to the dead in the dust. This isn't talking about a rapture. For behold, Yahweh comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. And so... When it's talking about entering the chambers, this chambers, the chambers of Sheol, the sh chambers of like, Abraham's bosom, just the resting, the resting place. They're going there for a while. They're going to hide. They're, they're resting. 
until the indignation is over. This is not an indication of a pre-trib rapture, just so you know. Um, some people have thought it is like the, maybe the place in the wilderness because Revelation says there is a place in the wilderness prepared, prepared for the woman. Possibly it could be like Noah's Ark as well. Those places in the wilderness that for the last 20 to 30 years have been being prepared, um, have been told to store up food and whatnot. Okay, let me see quickly. I think we can do one more chapter. Um, I know, me too, Arthur. But I was like thinking of it. <laughs> it's just funny because... Oh, it's like, it's funny how the Bible is so graphic. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so thank you guys for answering her. Um, I see there must have been a question. Okay, so the the Torah is just, yep, Genesis to Deuteronomy, and you can find that in any Bible. And if anybody hands you a New Testament only with the book of Psalms and Proverbs, burn it and go get a whole Bible. <laughs> Go get the, that won't make any sense to you. You can't start a book at the end. Say no. So go back and get a whole Bible. Um, any questions, real-time questions about what we're reading? Um, okay, do you want to do one more chapter, Alex? You got it in you for one more chapter? Okay, one more chapter. One more chapter, one more chapter. Okay, oh, I'm kind of fading today too. It's been... A big day. Good. In that day, Yahweh, with his severe sword, great and strong, will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, that twisted serpent. Now, this is a prophetic picture of Satan, Hasatan. Now, just so you know, Hasatan is the adversary in, in, in Hebrew. It means the enemy, the adversary. And he will slay the reptile that is in the sea. In that day, sing to her a vineyard of red wine, I, Yahweh, keep it, I water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I keep it night and day. Fury is not in me. Who would set briars and thorns against me in battle? I would go through them. I would burn them together. This is Yahweh speaking. Or let him take hold of my strength. Oh, I love this verse. Okay, so he was just saying, like, who's going to set briars and thorns against me? This is Yahweh. He said, you can't stop me. But what he does say, look in verse 5. Or let him take hold of my strength. Because the judgment's going to come against you. You can't stop Yahweh. But he says, take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me. We're supposed to make peace with Yahweh and he shall make peace with me. So that's through Yeshua. Like Yahweh has an extended hand to everybody. Just take hold of my strength and make peace with me. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. Those who come, he shall cause to take root in Jacob. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. Um, the whole world right now is filled with the 10 northern tribes of Israel and the house of Judah scattered around everywhere. And anybody else, you just come to us and take root in us. Listen, verse 7. Has he struck Israel as he struck those who struck him? That's a lot of hymns there. Listen. Has he struck Israel as he struck the nations who came against Israel? Or has he been slain according to the slaughter of those, the nations, who were slain by him, by Yahweh? In measure, by sending it away, you contended with it. He removes it by his rough wind in the day of the east wind. Therefore, by this, the iniquity of Jacob will be covered. And this is all the fruit of taking away his sin. When he makes all the stones of the altar like chalkboards, chalk stones that are beaten to dust, wooden images and incense altars shall not stand. So, by sending it away, you can... so. <laughs> I know this kind of gets confusing right here with the word language. By sending it away, Yahweh contended with us, right? He sent us away, removed us. Judah and Ephraim were both scattered. He removed us by an east wind. If you've ever seen an, an, a wind that comes out of the east, at least where we live, is very strong and just a bad omen. It's like a really bad thing. You know it's going to be drying. It brings it sometimes hail. It's not a good thing. And that is how, right, through this purging that we're going to go through, this is how the iniquity of Jacob, us, we're all children of Jacob, Israel, will be covered because we were punished. We were disciplined and chastised, and that's going to then be the atoning for us, right? We had to learn our lesson, so to speak. That's why. Let's learn our lesson. Don't make replacement ceremonies. Learn our lesson. So that's, then he took away our sin. We are humbled through this refining period. This east wind that comes is to refine us. It like blows away all our shaft, all the bad stuff, okay? 
and all of our altars and wooden images. That's Easter right there, the sword Easter, and, and like wooden crosses we're going to get rid of, the incense altars, all those things that we do wrong are going to be gone. Verse 10, yet the fortified city will be desolate, the inhabitation, the habitation forsaken and left like a wilderness. There the calf will feed and there it will lie down and consume its branches. So he did leave Israel empty, right? We were scattered from Israel. He scattered, he, the habitation like Jerusalem was desolate for a while. When his bows are, um, verse 11, when his bows are withered, they will be broken off. The women come and set them on fire, for it is a people of no understanding. Therefore, he who made them will not have mercy on them, and he who formed them will show them no favor. So again, going back to that, he's going to punish us and show us no mercy for a while. And Hosea says the same thing. Same thing. Tell the house of Israel, name her Lo Ruhama. Um, I will have no mercy on the house of Israel. But in that same place, he says, I will have mercy on her. Um, verse 12, and it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh will thresh from the channel of the river from the Nile to the brook of Egypt, and you will be gathered one by one. Do you feel kind of alone? That's because he's gathering you one by one. Zechariah says the same thing. Well, it doesn't say one by one. It says you will, each family will mourn by themselves. Okay. Oh, okay. And you will be gathered one by one, O you children of Israel. So it shall be in that day, the great trumpet will be blown. Yom Teruah. They will come who are about to perish in the land of Assyria and they who are outcasts in the land of Egypt, like America's end time Egypt, and shall worship Yahweh in the holy mount at Jerusalem. See, there's no pre-trib rapture. The trumpet happens after we've been purged and scourged and disciplined and go through all this hard stuff. Afterwards, then the great trumpet will be blown and the hum people who have been humbled and purified and refined will then come. Why? Because we're about to perish in the land of Assyria. Guys, we're going to, it literally, Yeshua says when he returns, will he find faith? Do you see how you have to know, remember I told you when you all wanted to look at the book of Revelation four or five in October, and you said, let's go through the book of Revelation. I said, ooh, that's hard to go through without going through Isaiah, Zechariah, Ezekiel, and Daniel first. Because you see how these are all the prophecies that Revelation is confirming. If you don't know these words, you can then twist, for example, this, the Second Thessalonians one, where it says at the, you know, at the sound of a trumpet, he'll return to the clouds. Well, you could twist that out of context if you didn't know all these verses. Oh, the Bible is so amazing. And so my advice to you, Oe, is read it through one time, Genesis to Revelation, and they'll go read it again, read it again, read it again, and every time you're going to pick up more. Like, I don't know how many times I've read the Bible. So many. So many. But, I love this. The great trumpet, the great trumpet will be blown. They will come who are about to perish in the land, we are about to perish in the land of Assyria. That doesn't, right? We're just about to perish because why? Because he's says he took his mercy from us he was not going to have mercy on us during the tribulation he's not he's going to refine us and you can't say you're a gentile because gentiles get grafted into israel there's no separate gate into heaven for the gentiles you gentiles if you believe in yahweh you're jacob you're israel there's one faith one hope one way i mean come on guys one messiah Exodus 12, 49, like I said again, Numbers 15, Leviticus 17 and 19, Isaiah 56, Ezekiel 47. There's one set of rules for the Gentiles and the native born. So, God didn't say, you Gentiles could just, you could just keep disobeying me. You're fine. You get raptured out of here. And, ooh, you, Jacob, I'm coming after you. No, he's refining all of us so we can be his. Okay, I am going to stop because I don't know that my eyes, pretty soon, pretty soon I'm going to get crazy eyed. Okay. That was really good, by the way. We stopped in on Isaiah 27. Okay, so questions. Quick questions. My eyes aren't going to last much longer. Um, and I've been going all day. Uh, yes, 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 Arthur. You got it. You got it. Away with all of... Oh, when I... Right before I came to Torah, Father had been telling me my house was full of idols. And I would like look around my house and be like, I don't, because I didn't have a Buddha statue or anything, so I couldn't see an idol. And then he revealed to us like the Christmas tree and all the pagan idolatry stuff. Oh, it was so beautiful. Um, 
Okay, sorry, Tristan. Love ya. And Alex is tired too. Yahweh bless you. Um, oh, Yahweh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your word. Lord, I'm so sorry that we and our forefathers have angered you to the point where you have to just justly and righteously execute your judgments against us. Father, in your wrath, remember mercy, grant us humility and righteousness that we may be hidden and help us, Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness that is coming. Thank you for your forgiveness that you do offer us, that you have offered us. Oh, please hold us. Please hold us and help us to cling to you as we're enduring the discipline. And may we bless your name and thank you for the discipline as it comes. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Now, once you know Torah, you really do usually say thank you. Anytime I get disciplined by God, I'm like, okay, thank you for exposing that in me. And thank you for purifying my heart to a deeper level. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for not giving up on me. You really do learn to like thank God for those trials. Um, Oh, awesome. I'm so thankful. Oh, I showed Linda, I showed my husband the bracelet. He thought that was so cute, too. He makes jewelry. We thought it was really neat. Awesome. Oh, Tammy, that's awesome. Tammy, I am so sorry, sweetie. I literally, I didn't even have, <laughs> I didn't have time to eat lunch earlier because I had to hurry. I got home right in time for the Zoom. And then I had to, get, right after the Zoom, I heard the Lord told me to do a live to help people understand the festivals. And then as the live was going on, my husband came home and I had to hurry up and get his dinner and then do the chores for the animals. And then it was time to do this. I physically got in the house at, what was it? What time did we start? So 6.53 is when I was upstairs, like running in there. So, okay. I love you all. I pray you get a good night's sleep. I don't see any questions. Is it okay? Oh, is it okay to rid the house of idols if they're not mine? So Lorenzo, you're gonna, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I can't, Hmm. Gideon was told to throw away his father's idols, but I was told to let my husband make his choices because he's the head of the home. I thank God he hated Christmas, so he was fine with getting rid of it. Um, but I did, for me, you, you're really only responsible for you, but if father told you to do it like Gideon, then you may have to do that. Um, oh, thank you, Cassandra. Um, hi, Estelle. I'm so glad you did join us. Good night, Donna. Um, uh, yes, and I've been praying a lot for you. Um, well, awesome. you know, I think Niaja, uh, Niaja, Niaja, did I say that right? Um, Niaja, um, I think you're really going to like the Zoom if you join it. The, I, oh, these people are so beautiful. Like, I have been in Torah almost, like, going on 20, this is my 23rd Passover. Um, I tell you what, there's some people that are not so beautiful yet that Yahweh needs to make a little bit more beautiful <laughs> the Torah movement that are not so nice I should say this group that we have right now is such a beautiful group of humble hearts who like even if we disagree like I'm okay if you disagree with me some people do believe the earth is flat I don't but I'm not gonna put you out for that I'm not gonna judge you for it and just the gentleness and the kindness and the love this group has is really really beautiful um and so I'm really thankful for everybody in here. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Camille. You know, Camille, that kind of happens. Um, it's like the flesh wars against the spirit. And so those who don't come and obey or those who, I don't know, man, it's, it's Satan does work them up. Satan, don't be the one through whom Satan works, <laughs> right? Don't any of us tear each other down, cut each other down, talk about bad about each other, be angry. Don't let us be the one through. But so many people are unaware even of what Satan's doing to them. He like destroys marriages and comes in. Oh, it's so sad, isn't it? It's so sad. Um, I'll pray for you. Um, we are in Wyoming, but we're all over the world, the people that come on here and that are in Zoom. Um, so, I hope that makes sense. Oh. No, Judaism is going off the rabbinic. Yeah, you're right, Angela. Judaism is the calendar that was created after the Babylonian exile. They did it because the Jews were getting dispersed. So, they went through and projected the dates of the biblical, uh, of the holidays, not based on the Bible way, but based on Judaism to make it easier because they said they could do it. Isn't that crazy? Oh, we could, Jessica, that's a good one. Um, Maybe, a, yeah, it, there's not much to it about the mixing of fibers. Um, the word is a Hebrew, it's, it's the, Shatanez is an acronym made of three Aramaic words, and it means spun woven fibers, and it's not just wool and linen. Um, 
it's just any two fibers together that you, you, you we, so like we aren't supposed to wear something that's 95% polyester, 5% spandex, or we're just not supposed to do that. It's, it's supposed to be when we clothe ourselves, it's a picture of clothing ourselves in humility, but that's a good thing. I'll, and I know RJ really wants um, one on the Zizio, but there's just like no specific way to make the Zizio. So I haven't like, and I'm just, it's so hard to like, how am I gonna film myself doing it? I'm sure I could figure it out. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I'll make notes of those things. I've had lots of suggestions come in this week and I've been super busy. It's been crazy. Um, well, so Barb, I prefer the NKJV for readability and understandability, and it's very accurate. The NASB is probably the most literal accurate translation, but the NKJV is really good, and I think it reads better. I was an English teacher. I taught um, college English. I taught grammar and writing and research writing and resume writing and, and, and literature and stuff. And so for me, I'm looking at the accuracy of the text presented as well as the understandability. And that's why I like the NKJV. Um, crosses are idols. Yes, crosses are idols. The modern cross is based on the cross from Mithra that was found hundreds of years before Yeshua. And you got to think about it. Why would we carry around a little piece of wood showing what Yeshua died on? It doesn't even make sense, right? Now, we can be thankful that he died on a cross, but his cross, the cross that he died on was more like a cross beam, just like a stake or a tree even, they think. Um, but most likely it was the wood from the tree, which is why they said tree. So, yeah, many people just worship their crosses. They go at the feet of the cross. It's like you start looking at it, you're like, what? Oh, what are they doing with this cross? And it was a sign of Mithra worship. You can look that up, M-I-T-H-R-A. Well, thanks, Francis. I love you, sweetie. Um, oh, I love you guys. Okay. Um, so Passover week begins, based on what they the report today, um, it, it appears... Now, you guys, if some of you are going by the Judaism calendar, I'm not going to judge you. Please don't think I'm going to I'm going to judge you if you're going to go off the April one. Um, but it's the night of the 25th through the night of the 26th is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So right before that, on the 25th, is when they would have sacrificed the Passover land, uh, Passover sacrifice and eaten it that evening and got on uh, got his body off the cross. Oh, please go look at the teaching from last week on Saturday where I went through the book of John. If those of you are just coming to pass, just to understanding the feast, please go look at the, under my, under my page, Melissa Shelley Smith, go to videos, and it's the one, Passover and John. You really need to see that if you missed it last week. It was really good and it'll help you understand this Passover season. It's amazing how hard you go for that. Oh, thanks, Randy. Brother, I love Yahweh. He saved me. He told, what, three different people to come to me when I first came to tour that my life was going to be like Jeremiah. And I was like, <laughs> like well, I didn't want his life. But it's been like that. And I've also had to learn the same lessons Jeremiah did. Um, I went through some times of bitterness just like Jeremiah. Because sometimes, man, man, it can be hard when everybody's coming against you. But it's okay. Yeah, he's good. He's good. And I've had to learn. It's humbled me. Um, okay. What time do you start Zoom on Sabbath? Um, so you're on CST. So it would be 11 your time, Laura. We do it 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um so I had a little sun thing on my wall. It was like a sun face. Yeah, they told me to get rid of that. Um, so that was the main one, then the Christmas tree. I didn't have any crosses, praise God. I always was raised not to do that. Thank you, Yahweh. Um, all the pagan holiday stuff. Um, I got rid of worldly music, which I didn't really like anyway, but I got rid of all my worldly music. Um, I had to throw away lots of stuff that had been for pagan holidays. I just, um, I'm trying to think of other idols I had. Mostly it was like that, the, just the NT and the Christmas tree and the Easter crap. Ooh, so terrible. Please, um, oh, thank you guys. Yes, I think we're, let me know. Um, 
Mm, I'm so glad, Jenny, you're seeing. Go to the podcast. Join us on the Zooms. You're going to just... See, the Zooms are so nice because everybody gets to see each other's face. Do it on a desktop if you can because you get to see all of them on Zoom. I paid the money. Nobody has to pay. I paid for the membership, uh, whatever it was, so that we could have the big things because I think it's important. Um, yes, a lot of you are in Canada. Oh, so Jessica... They do say woolen linen as an example in one spot. So there's two verses in the Bible that say not to wear mixed fiber, shatanez, and then it says shatanez, and then it says woolen linen, thus proving the word shatanez doesn't mean woolen linen because it like clarified an example. And the two main fabrics that were used are woolen linen because when you shear your sheep, you card it, you wash it, you, well, you wash it, and then you card it, and you spin it, and that makes you know your wool garment and then linen, you read it, you have to read it, and then you you um, spin those fibers on a treadle. And so those were the two main fabrics they had back then. They didn't have polyester and stuff like that. They didn't even have cotton, really, in, in, in Israel that I know of. And so why it gave the example there of woolen is like, don't blend them together. And it's not that you can't, so if I have a patch on here, like say this is, I think this is polyester. Let's say I put a cotton patch on here. I didn't blend it together. It's the actual fiber. And since I do do fiber arts, it was easy for me to comprehend. So when you take a car, um, take some of your raw wool fiber, for example, um, if I was going to take some of that and then some linen and on my, on my treadle, on my spinning wheel, I could hold both of those fibers together and as I could feed it into the machine and it would spin them into one. And I like my little hand motions. It would spin them into one fiber. Yahweh says no, because you're not supposed to have like 5% worldliness in you. You're not supposed to mix things. It has nothing to do with frequency. The frequency may be a consequence, but it's not what it's about. He wasn't protecting us from frequency problems. He was telling us what he told me in my ear when I said, Father, what is the purpose of this? He says, because I want you to be 100% holy to me. And when you dress yourself every day, I want you to think that you represent me in holiness 100%. I don't want you to be 5% of the world, 2% of the world, not 1% of the world. I don't want you to be 50% of the world. I want you to be fully mine. So when we dress, and women, I do want to say, somebody asked me the other day to reach out to start doing videos about modesty because he said, I think you understand it because you dress modest. And I do want to encourage women to dress modest. Like when I bend over, you'll never see down my shirt. You'll never see above up my shirt. You're not going to see down my pants. Um, things are not skin tight leggings. We, I don't wear makeup, so I'm not like vain. I don't color my hair. You know, we try to be representative of God and thinking about him. And so I am going to start making some of those videos. You don't have to wear a dress though. Sometimes that's the most immodest thing you could do, at least in my professions. Um, so it's just about being humble. It's about being careful to not cause a brother to stumble, right? If that makes sense. Um, so yeah, Randy, I, I don't know. It, it is, but it's not. Um, but Randy, just remember the Christian church brought us all to Yeshua is what I say. And so it doesn't make it right. And I just... There's so much where I could go through it, but it's okay. Um, um, giants as well. Bring it closer to them. Tell me what's wrong with the cross. So it was based on Mithra worship. It was based on, they found crosses, the modern cross, before, like in ancient archaeological digs and stuff, way before Yeshua was ever crucified on one. And then people just worship it. They're always like, they wear this cross, almost like a good luck thing on them. Um, okay. I'm going to have to go because um okay oh Jody you're awesome look at that um so meat and milk is not biblical it says not to cook a kid in its mother's milk but we see in the story of Genesis that Abraham served curds and a fatted lamb to the animals it's just a a goat in its mother's milk. You that's so kosher just is technically meaning clean and okay. So I eat biblically clean, completely biblically clean, hundred um, percent biblically clean. No pork, no contamination, no cross contamination. Um, hope that makes sense.
Yeah, I do, Jeanette. Oh, I know I confuse people. I just read it so many years where I know where it's capital L-O-R-D, all capitals, or capital G-O-D, I just put the word Yahweh. If it's capital G, little O, little D, it's the word Elohim. If it's capital L, little O-R-D, it's Adonai. Yeah, I just do it on autopilot. You're right. I probably did. You're probably like, this is the NKJV, and it doesn't say that. What is she doing? I could see how that would be confusing. Um, so, Tammy, I don't, yeah. I mean, I'm... Those are like so many people, the, the cross necklace, if you think about it, it, yeah, it's, it's like people worship that cross and that cross, that, that cross right now is rooted in Mithra worship and the Celtic religions use that cross symbol. Yeshua, they think died like in a, more of a stake, like his hands are up here. Um, so I wouldn't wear one. Right. So good job, Danielle. Oh no. July 1st is not the first of the new year. March 11th was the beginning of the new year this year on the biblical calendar, spring. It's a little early. See, here's the thing. <laughs> Notice how that's a little early because even on like the Gregorian calendar, like usually March 21st is the beginning of spring. And so that's why we were having a hard time with this, this odd timing of things. And that's why Judaism threw in the 13th month. But because the Abib Barley, they did find enough of it this week. That's why I'm not going to judge anybody if you celebrate it next month. I can't, I can't judge anybody, right? We're going based on reports of the Abib Barley here in America. I know that Yahweh's making a sign on, a, on April 8th to the world, he told me, and, and, and I get it. And like he says, they don't understand, just like when you show a spit in the mud. See, there was a, from the Talmud, there was a story that said when the Messiah comes, he's going to spit in the mud and his, his mud, his spit will be so powerful it'll heal the blind. That's why Yeshua did that. It's not that he needed to spit in the mud and the mud did something magical. He was meeting them where they were. And this is, you know, on the Judaism calendar, this is the beginning of the new year on April 8th. And so I'm not going to judge anybody, whichever calendar you do, because we're trying our best here in America. On this particular one, based on the Abib Barley, it does seem like the new year was March 11th. I do have to say that. Um, but at the same point, do you see what's, what the mess is? We got scattered. We're scattered. We're dispersed. It's hard, right? It's hard to exactly know. But for those of you following the Judaism rabbinic calendar, then April 8th would be the new year. But that's not even based on the new moon sighting because it would technically be April 9th or 10th. See how it gets so crazy? There's so many crazy things. Um, oh, Lorenzo. Um, so March 25th at the end of the day would be when they did Passover. And then as the March at, on the end of March 25th to March 26th is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay. John was a blessing. Okay. Awesome, Randy. Um, yes, Danielle. Yep. So what are you? What do you mean? What are we? Nobody in the Bible had any religion. They just followed the Bible. They were believers in Yahweh. They were called Israel. So we are all Israel, right? We are no denomination. We are no anything. We're Israel. Now, my family are blood Jewish Levites. Some of you might be Jews, like Judah. Some of you might be from the tribe of Ephraim or Dan. But God tells us if we cling to him, we become part of Israel. There's 12 tribes going into the New Jerusalem. 12 gates labeled with the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, guys, Sabbath starts Friday night at sunset, Arthur. At sunset on Friday night starts the Sabbath. Um, ooh, Randy, I'm sorry, you're in between Job and Paul. Um, that's got to be hard. So, okay, Joe. Joe, you need to go watch the video I posted earlier today, okay? It'll help you. It'll help you because we were actually technically waiting for the Abib Barley. Devorah Gordon didn't think there was enough, but they were going to do another report 10 days later. 10 days later was yesterday. She released that report this morning sometime. And so they do believe, it does seem, a four of the seven fields have enough barley. If we wait another month, the barley will be past the ripe, of, past the stage of the first fruits, it appears, and it could shatter in the head, and then that wouldn't, yeah, that's just, you know. Okay, guys, I love you. Um, Fourth of July. Kenneth, I do not want to know what you're asking, but I don't really honor the Fourth of July because 
but it's not a pagan holiday. It's just the birth of America. They do lots, all sorts of weird things. Um, I can see everyone's face on my phone. Just go, oh, okay. Oh, okay, Kimberly. I didn't know you could do that too. Okay, guys, boom. there's a lot of questions. I'll never catch up and I'll never get to bed if I don't. So I'm going to stop it. So, um, <laughs> awesome, Laura. Feel free to message me if I didn't get to your question because <laughs> my brain is telling me I got to stop. I've been up since, well, I got up first at like two something this morning. And then I had some dreams and then I got up, up at like four. So not, but that was the old three. You got to remember this time change thing is kicking my butt. This old lady, man, I'm too old for this guys. Okay. I love you all. Message me if you have questions. Um, cause I've got, I've got to go. I love you all. Yahweh bless you. Good night. Shalom. Check out the information. Message me. Follow me also on Instagram. Don't ever leave a comment on, we well, do leave a comment, please, on everything you see. You know why? Because it helps the algorithm. So the more you comment and like and share my the videos I make, the more that they get out there. So yes, help. Yes, help. Do that. Okay. Love you all.